Wow, the pressure is getting worse. Hey, this girl's story completely blew me away. Hey guys, my name's Cassidy, and I'm here to tell you about my testimony. I was an extreme atheist, an extreme vegan, pansexual, and honestly, just an egotistic, terrible person. I was mean, I actively shamed Christians, just went out of my way to shame anyone who didn't believe in what I believed in. I basically made veganism my god, I went to school for animal rights, I worked for PETA, I did protest, I mean, I did pride parade, I was in a bi lettuce bikini on Capitol Hill handing out veggie dogs to senators, you know, I was in it. And then my life flipped. So June 2019, um, I had a really bad stomach ache and that lasted for about a week. And I finally went to the ER and they did a CAT scan and they said it's Crohn's disease. My health really began to decline. Doctors were prescribing me medication, pain medicine, anything to just help, but nothing was working. I lost about 60 pounds in three months. I had excruciating pain every second of every day um, to the point I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't lift my legs. Uh, my mom had to help me to the bathroom sometimes. I mean, the worst pain. Every bite of food just hurt me. Even water hurt me sometimes. I mean, it was painful. Every bite I just had anxiety about. And every day I, I didn't know if what day would be my last day. Every day I woke up and I hated being here. I just hated every second of it. I just was wanting to die, wanting to die. I wanted to kill myself. I was either gonna die from this disease or killing myself, either one. And I was fine with it. I mean, I had nothing to live for, I had no hope. And I lost, you know, a lot of, in my personal life. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to go through. But I was like, mom, like, we gotta go. I'm doing really bad, I don't think I'm gonna make it. And I felt it that this was gonna be my last night on earth, like this was it. And I was, I was excited. I was like, no more pain, no more tears, nothing. I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. I don't wanna be here anymore. I don't have any hope. I have no reason to live and nothing. I had the same dietitian every single morning come in. And then there was that one night that I thought it was gonna be my last. And this woman comes in and she's this beautiful Jamaican woman. And I've never seen her before. And I've been in and out of the hospital. Like I, I know these people really well. I've never seen her before. She's asking what I can eat. And I'm like, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden like these tears just come coming down my face. She sees me crying and she's like, you know, we need to pray. I'm going to pray with you. And I used every ounce of my energy left to tell her, no, <laughs> we are not praying. I am an extreme atheist. You will not, no, 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 no. And then she's like, no, we are. And she goes to my side and, and at this point I'm like, you know what? Talk your nonsense, whatever. I don't even care. If you want to try, go ahead. So she grabs my hands and she begins to pray and I've never heard like, she had so much passion for me, but I've, I don't know her. I mean, she doesn't know me at all. She doesn't know what I've been through, nothing. And she had so much passion in that prayer. And I don't remember a lot of it, but I do remember her saying, you will heal and you will be a healer. So after she left, I didn't expect anything like from that. I really didn't. So I go to sleep hoping I'm like, I'm gonna die tonight. Like I was, I was hype. And I wake up the next day I have absolutely no pain, no pain. I can walk again. Like, I just, something, something sparked in me. I don't know what it was. And my mom was like, what's going on? The doctors were like, no, this, this is like what happened. And I just kept saying, I don't know. I just have this light within me. I have a light within me. And um, I was like, I can leave the hospital. I'm fine. And they're like, no, no, no. So they made me stay another day, which was whatever. It's fine. But uh, so I left and I still didn't believe at this point. I was just kind of like, oh, I'm healthy. I can wild out now. So I did. I started to party more. Um, you know, I was drinking, smoking, having sex, doing anything I could to kind of fill, fill a void. I was talking to different girls at that time and one was a Buddhist. So I have like all these Buddhist tattoos and I was um, going in kind of that route. Like I was like, oh, like enlightenment, Buddhist, da -da -da, yoga. And then COVID hit. So I kind of isolated and was really thinking about it more. And I was like, oh, like maybe God is mother earth and it's nature and that's God. And, and then I woke up one day and I just had on my mind, her hands, that woman's hands on me. And I just thought about it more. And I'm thought, I thought about, it, I'm like, she could have lost her job for praying for me. I could have sued her. I could have destroyed her. She came at a time that wasn't normal. A woman I've never seen before. So like, all right, let's, let's dive into this. Let's find some truth. So. I 
go online. I'm looking all over the hospital's directory, trying to find this woman. There's, I can't find her. I mean, no, like she, she just didn't exist. And I knew in my heart, even before searching, I knew she didn't exist. And I had to put beside my pride, put beside myself. I mean, I had to really just admit that I was wrong. And that was an angel sent from God. It, it had to be divine intervention. There is no physical way that I could have woken up without pain and still be alive. There's no physical way, none. And I had to admit that. I had to admit that there's a God. There's someone who loves me that would save someone like me. I mean, I actively shamed Christians. I actively went against his kingdom. I did everything against it, but he still had hope for me. Like, and I, like I lost all hope. I lost everything and he still saw something in me. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, he, he does, he loves all of us. If we just open our hearts to him, I mean, what do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. So just try it. You know, after I realized that it was an angel that really started my spiritual walk with the Lord, I still, I mean, I still have health issues. Like I have a permanent IV to my heart. Um, I have an elostomy bag, um, but it's saving my life. You know, I've been through these trials and these struggles, but I can tell you all of my might that it is so much better with the Lord by your side. I mean, I was a, I was a sinner. I mean, I'm still a sinner and he still loves me just the way I am. I didn't deserve his love. I mean, I deserve hell. I really did. You know, I'm just, I really just am so grateful for him. And even with my struggles, I see the influence that my struggles have on people. Even my mom, she wasn't a believer either. And then she saw what, what, what God has done for me. And, you know, she had to put away her ego and be like, you know what? I was wrong. He does. He is real. He's now filled that void, that veganism, my pansexualism, my atheist, anything that I wanted to attach myself to, he's filled that void. He's filled it with his love to the point where I don't need anything else. I pray that you can just give him a chance. Just give him a chance. You know, this is an evil, evil world. There is an enemy, but we have a savior. We have a comforter. We have someone who's by our side constantly. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall receive eternal life. That's it. All you gotta do is believe. This world makes it so, so hard, but it's not, it's easy, it's simple. And these religions, they're trying to fill that void too. If, if any religion that tells you to do something, no. That's what Jesus, Jesus says done, religion says do. It's done, it's finished. When, when Jesus was on that cross and he died to save us, he said, it is finished. Donezo. It's done. He won. He wins. Guys, I want to ask you guys to please pray for her. Her name is Cassidy Killiger. That's her name on YouTube. Please keep her in your prayers. Holy Ghost, have your way. I keep hearing, stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. I feel like it's going to be a worker and it's going to be a female. But I could be wrong. Let's see. In Jesus' name. Excuse me. Excuse me. So I'm with Bubbles. We here at uh, JD Sports and Millennium Mall. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes we deal with depression, which you deal with sometimes, and you can't get it off. You, you're, you're reading me. You, you and your mom are really close, too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice. You got a crystal. Yeah, I I know about them. That is a checkpoint for demons. They can attach to those things. They're ancient spirits. You got to get rid of that crystal. That depression will go. I promise you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's not mine. How about this? I'll cash out to you $300, and you give it to them and say that person bought it from me. That's how serious I am. This is demonic. It's a demon attached. I bind every unclean spirit to the crystal in the name of Jesus. See, that's why you're getting touched right now. You just got freed. That spirit just came off. Thank you. Here's the number one way to know if you have the Holy Spirit. And no, it's not speaking in tongues or prophesying or any of that stuff. I'm sharing this because the Bible says if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not of Christ. Listen closely. The number one way to know if you have the Holy Spirit is if you have conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit convicts of righteousness, sin, and judgment. So if you're grieved after you sin, you have the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about feeling bad about things. I'm talking about feeling grief in your soul. The last time you sinned and liked it was before you gave your life to Jesus, I promise. And yes, the Bible says that sin has a pleasure for a season, but keyword season. If you feel conviction after you feel justified, that means you've got the Holy Spirit. If you want to grow in your love for God, 
out in others, check out my profile, or shoot me a message for more. do it. We tend to think of sin as doing what is wrong, but James tells us that sin is also failing to do what is right. These two kinds of sin are sometimes called sins of commission and sins of omission. It is a sin to lie. It can also be a sin to know the truth and not tell it. It is a sin to speak evil of someone. It is also a sin to avoid that person when you know he or she needs your friendship. You should be willing to help as the Holy Spirit guides you. If God has prompted you to do a kind act to render a service or to restore a relationship to it, you will experience a renewed and refreshed vitality in your Christian faith.